So um, I'm currently sitting here with uh, Commissioner Fuller uh, with the Mecklenburg County, and uh, so he just gave a quick presentation um, about your perspective as a political figure in the area. Uh, you have some big dreams coming up here. Hopefully, you can talk about that. Uh, but I thought it was really interesting. Um, you're sharing your perspective of how you changed from no, I think that uh, marijuana is not right to like, okay, let's let's explore this. Can you talk a little bit about how, like was there a catalyst or just how your mind changed in there? So, you know, as a county commissioner, one of our big issues is public health, um, also economic development and uh, some degree of the criminal justice system. So when I was first in office, uh, I came with the views that most other people have, which is, you know, no, we're not going to legalize marijuana, why would we do that? Right. Um, and kept that view for a couple of years, but when I talked to Representative Kelly Alexander from our General Assembly, and he presented me to it, he presented it to me in a way that I said, hmm, that made me think, mm -hmm. especially medical marijuana. Once I started to really look at medical marijuana, I started to say, well, why would we keep that from people if it's really helping people and it doesn't have side effects, or at least we can control the side effects. Why wouldn't we do that? And so once you get into that conversation, you start to say, okay, well, what, what is the difference in terms of how the law should approach marijuana? What is the difference between medical marijuana and using it for other reasons, recreational reasons or other reasons? And so as I did more, I said, you know, we, there's no reason for us to have a whole system set up where we you know, criminalize people and put people in jail and you know, have people have records for the rest of their lives because of this. And I said, that doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. so was, that, it, was, change. was that shift uh, very sudden? Was it a years long process? How long do you think you, you shifted from like no to like, okay, look, I, this is a possibility? Yeah, so I would say it was longer making the shift to medical marijuana. Okay. Once I was there, it wasn't much dis distance to gotcha. go the next uh, yeah. and say, you know what, let's just decriminalize this altogether. <laughs> sure. Um, now, as I, as I said, I think we need to make sure that we have controls. We need to make sure this is not a free-for-all that people can just, you know, uh, do whatever they want. Right. I think we do need to have some controls. But at the basis of it, it should not be criminal. Mm. It shouldn't be. There's no reason for it to be. Yeah. So you mentioned about four or five key things to consider uh, on that journey to legalization. Um, so like um, just making sure that we don't uh, allow children, for example, right. to have access to it. Can you talk a little bit about some of those key points? Sure. So we need to think about um, addiction, right? Addiction is real. And we need to think about what impact decriminalizing uh, marijuana would have on addiction. Would it make more people become addicted? Um, I have my doubts that it would, but, you know, let's look at that. Right. We need to look at, you know, whether children have access to it, just like alcohol, just like cigarettes, just like anything else. We want to control access the children have to it. Um, when you look at the banking issues, right, so yeah. we need to make sure that people who are in the business can actually do business like everybody else, <laughs> which is having a bank account and credit cards and whatever it is that, um, that folks need. Um, and it's looking at things like that that will that totally apart from legalizing that there are other issues that we have to look at too like the issues I just mentioned. Yeah, um, I know with uh, banking and some of the states that have journeyed onto the legalization side, uh, where banks didn't want to do business for whatever their reasons, uh, that it was such a safety hazard because you know businesses were having cash and like boxes and you know safety things and just all over the place and so you know of course people eventually find out about that and so it becomes a huge mm -hmm. safety issue absolutely um, so and i saw I, I can't remember where i saw it it was on pbs or so i can't remember but a company out in california i think mm -hmm. where they had to hire armed guards yeah yeah you know, just to protect the business because right. it's all cash, which makes sense. Yeah, sure. But why should you have to do that <laughs> as a business right. owner? In the modern day. In the modern day, day, right. Yeah, and then you got to keep cash places. You can't keep it in a, in a bank. You got to keep it somewhere else. And then, sure, and, in a way. And, and then you are potentially liable for laundering if you right. somehow try to move it in a way so that it can get into a bank. Mm -hmm. That seems to be totally ridiculous. Yeah. 
So I think to me all those points make sense. So now you mentioned a few actionable steps, right? Like how do we go from where we are um, to potentially legalizing it or, or making it, making the laws more sensible? What are some of those key points that we should take? So I think at the bottom is you take away criminalization. It opens up all the other conversations we need to have that we've just been talking about in these few minutes. So if you take it off the controlled substance list, take it off. Now it's not a crime. Okay, now let's deal with the, all the other issues. But you gotta get that step first. And that's a step that looks like the House of Representatives in Congress, I think they're there. Senate, not so much. A Republican dominated Senate, a lot of Southern senators. So think about this, that um, you, know, you have a U.S. Senator from the South who is saying, yes, we ought to do this. I think that, that would say a lot right, to a lot of people. Yeah. So once you get that done in Congress, now you can start to have, okay, now have some hearings about that. Have some hearings about, you know, dealing with addiction programs or prevention of addiction, dealing with keeping away from children, warnings if you need to do that on packaging of products. All that stuff we can talk about. But until you get that criminalization piece done first, it makes it hard to do everything else. You mentioned the key part of, of uh, speak or making this change as, as civilians is speaking with your political representative wherever you live. Uh, and you mentioned a couple of key ways of sort of how to go about that. Like what's the best way? Because you know I can just call up somebody, but I, I might not know exactly how to voice my concern or opposition to something. Right. How would you suggest that? So here's what I, I would say. First of all, you need to support your friends. So you, there are people in legislatures, in state legislatures, even federal, who do support this. And so you, you, know, you need to support them. They need to know that you're behind them because they're fighting a battle against people who are against this. And so if they have some comfort that they're not you know, endangering themselves politically because they've got support, then it helps with the advocacy piece. Because I think you need to have elected officials advocating to other elected officials about it. That's when you start to get change. So if I can go to my fellow commissioner or fellow senator, uh, when I'm a U.S. senator, if I can go to a fellow senator and say, hey look, so here's some issues. Let me hear what you have to say. It starts their thinking process. Now they say, okay, well maybe. Maybe that's too bad thing. Mm -hmm. Then if I can go to folks in that other senator's state and say, hey, you need to talk to your senator, encourage him, mm -hmm. encourage her, now we start to get something happen. Okay. All right. Um, so I don't want to take up too much more of your time. If someone wants to learn more about you, actually, before we get to that, yes. so you have plans uh, higher than the commissioner of yes. Mecklenburg County. Yes, can you talk about that, please? Yes, so I'm running now for the United States Senate to represent North Carolina. Fantastic. And uh, we're, our campaign has already started. The, um, the primary election is in March, and then the general in March of 2020, and then the general in November of 2020. So I'm going all across the state, and literally, uh, literally <laughs> all across the state. Yeah. Uh, it's a great state. I love North Carolina. It's a great state. Um, and so uh, I'm telling my story, mm -hmm. and this is part of my message that we need to make sure that people have a fair shot to make it in America. And that means that people ought to have stable homes and health care that works for them. And this is part of it, I think. Um, and the ability to be able to make a living for yourself, whether it's in this industry or any other industry. And so you can find out more <laughs> at, uh, at our website. We're at uh, www.fullerfornorthcarolina. Okay, that's where folks should go if, if uh, they want to find out more about you and, and uh, your your platform, if you will. Is that yes. the right term? Yes, that's, okay. that is the right term. Yes. <laughs> All right.